All right, class. First off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today we um, we're going to be talking about the market economy. We've already talked about the traditional and command economy. Uh, if you don't remember that stuff, you may want to watch the previous video on that uh, to refresh yourself. But this is the one that we typically have right now in our country, the market economy. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this lesson. All right, for the objectives, we're going to analyze what economic freedom looks like. What is it specifically and stuff like that? Uh, you might hear politicians talk about it. Well, we're going to see exactly what is it. We're going to examine the pros and cons of a market economy. And uh, we're not going to do that last one because that was for the last lesson. So we're going to skip that creating an argument part. All right, so here is your warm-up picture. Now, the question's asking you from the Uncle Sam guy, the guy with the hat, from his point of view, which is the what's being shown on the mirror, what's wrong with this tree? To him, what's... What what's wrong with the tree? What makes it look like different than the way it really is? You know, so think about everything. Look at that the picture of the mirror, you know, the tree in the mirror, and look how it really looks like. Okay, now if you have your phone, it might be hard to see um, certain things on the tree, on the mirror. Um, but try your best. Try to you know bring it up close, things like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's what you're doing, okay? So go ahead, write your response to that, okay? Pause the video, because we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so market economy. This is basically people's decisions, acts as votes when it comes to the market. So think of it like this. When you decide you want to buy a soda, let's just say, for example, you decide to choose Pepsi over Coca-Cola. Basically, you're casting your vote, saying, I want this over this. You know, I'd rather have a Pepsi than a Coca-Cola. And the more votes something gets, the more that company will produce it. So let's say you decide you want a Pepsi. Okay, cool. Now, which flavor? There's regular, diet, there's cherry, there's, you know, various forms. So let's say you pick cherry Pepsi. Well, now you're telling that company... I like this, make more of it. And the more people, you know, buy it or vote for it, in a sense, the more that company's like, hey, people are really liking this. We need to make more of that. Um, another great example is like the NFL, right? They sell jerseys like crazy, okay? Uh, before Tom Brady was like the number one seller and now he's gone down. So now it's like people like Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. These guys are now up there. That's telling the, when people buy their jerseys, that's telling the NFL, the people like this guy. So maybe we should show their games more on the primetime games. You know, it's telling the company that makes jerseys, make more of their jerseys because those are selling. You know, I hate to say it, but like David Carr, you know, um, that guy Lance for the 49ers. They're not selling their jerseys as much because why? Car's not doing too well and that guy Lance got hurt. So they're not making those jerseys as much because no one's buying them. People are buying more Garoppolo than that guy Lance because Garoppolo is actually playing and he's doing well. So, yeah. Okay. So you as people, the consumers, play a large role when it comes to what is made, what continues to be made, and what gets discontinued. All right, so the pros to a market economy. Number one, it can adjust quickly. So again, like I was saying, if a company creates something like, a, you know, jelly beans make a flavor that takes, tastes like dog poop. If people don't buy it, they're going to stop making it. Because again, they don't want to waste their time, their their resources, their money on something that's not going to give them money, that people are not going to buy. So they'll stop it quick, fast, in a hurry and adjust and change to make another flavor, okay? 
The other thing is, it's a high degree of individual freedom, meaning you can buy whatever you like. You're not limited to a certain selection, a certain group of things. You could buy whatever you want, as much as you want, things like that. Now, let's say you want to make something. You're free to make whatever you want to sell, as long as you believe, you think it will sell. So I gave the example in class. If someone made a bicycle that slapped someone across the head every mile, you know, is that going to sell? Not really, right? It's not really going to sell, but it might sell a little. But hey, that person who made that bike who's selling it, they have that freedom to make it. All right. The other thing is, under a traditional market economy, the government gives little interference. They don't really mendle in what the economy is doing. They just let the economy go and that type of thing. You know, so as long as businesses are making money, they're cool. The next one, decisions are not in the hands of the few. Okay, we kind of talked about this a little bit. In the command economy, yeah, the government, you know, however many people there are, they control what's being sold. They say, you know, the people will like this flavored coffee. Whereas in this economy, again, your decisions are the deciding factor. So everybody chooses and not just a handful of people chooses. Okay. The next one, a large number of goods and services. Okay. Again, think about the fast food places that sells hamburgers. You know, we did this in class a couple months ago. I give you guys like 10 seconds. And most, most classes got about eight, nine Named nine, nine, eight or nine places. So you got variations. So if you don't like Burger King, if you don't like McDonald's, you don't like, you know, um, in and out there are plenty other places to go. Jack in the Box, Carl's Jr., uh, Five Guys, you know, The Habit. You got places to choose. Okay? You're not limited. And lastly, because you bought something, you spent your money on whatever item you bought, you're going to be happy with that decision. Why? Because you bought it. Nobody forced you to buy that item. You know, so you should be satisfied. You should be happy, you know, with what you bought. Or else, what was the point of buying it? You know, you're just wasting your money. So that's the whole thing with the market economy. People buy what they want, and then they're satisfied with it. Okay, so let's go to the bad things about the market economy. Number one, it doesn't serve the basic needs for everyone. That's the key word, everyone. There are plenty of homeless people in this country who don't have, you know, can't get a meal every day, don't have access to fresh water, uh, don't sleep and live in a place that uh, that's stable you know and on top of that their clothing may not be the best to keep them warm and things like that you know and again like some students said in class well some of them do yeah some but again we're talking about everyone okay also, the, another bad thing, it doesn't pro pro provide enough services for everyone. Meaning like this, if you go out for dinner on a Friday night, typically you're going to have to wait unless you have like a reservation and things like that. But let's say you don't. The minimum amount of time you would have to wait normally is like anywhere from half hour to 45 minutes. And some places they tell you, yeah, it's going to be like an hour and a half you're going to have to wait. Why? Because they can't serve everyone at the same time. Places are limited. So sometimes, hey, we're at capacity. We can't take any more people. You're going to have to wait if you really want to eat here. If you really want to go to this place. Okay. The other one is there's a high degree of uncertainty for workers and businesses when change happens. Now, what are we talking about? Well, a great example was in 2020 when COVID hit. There was a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of workers who did not have money saved up. You know, 
There's a lot of people who did not have money saved up. So when it hit and they end up losing their job because, you know, they're not opening up. Um, some people were really hurting. Like, I don't, I don't have any money coming in. I hear, I hear the stimulus, next stimulus package thing is coming in a couple months. How am I going to make ends meet? You know, how am I going to buy food? How am I going to do this and that, pay the rent? So some people were really hurting. Same thing with businesses. There are some businesses that are like, oh, we'll be fine. It, during the summertime, the disease will get burned out, just like the flu, because it's so hot outside. We'll be fine. And that didn't happen. So a lot of businesses went under. You know. Lastly, it, the market economy can fail if three conditions aren't met. Number one, reasonable competition. So let's say the whole entire country there's only two fast food places to get food let's say there's like chipotle and long john silver all right i don't know about you but i don't really like those places the only thing i like from one of them is long john silver is the hush puppies that's about it so that's the only thing i would probably get if i wanted to eat but some people just don't like either one of those places so they're like what choices do I have? What other choice do I got? Nothing. And if that's the case, there's only like two options. And if you don't like both of them, you're not going to be satisfied with those choices or what they're having to offer. Okay, so your chances are you're not going to spend your money on either place. All right. Resources must be reasonably free to move from one activity to another. And lastly, consumers need access to adequate information so they can basically decide where should i go to buy this item should i go to target should i go to walmart should i go to uh, best buy you know sh should i go online you know where should i go to buy so let's say a tv you know that's why right now with the uh, thanksgiving coming around and black friday some companies are already releasing the information on their ads you know we're selling a 44 inch tv for 100 bucks you know, and all these other places are doing that same thing because they want you to have enough information so where you can be like, you know what? I'll yeah, I'll, I should go to Best Buy to buy this computer, this laptop, and Target. Yeah, that that price on the air fryer, man, that's a really good price. I can't beat that. I should go there and get that. You know, that's why they do that kind of stuff. So economic freedom. What does this mean? Well, it means you get to choose. Now, what kind of things do you get to choose? Number one, where you work. Nobody puts a gun to your head saying, you got to be a dentist. You got to be a farmer. You got to be a, a barber. You know, no one's going to do that. Okay. Now, on the flip side, the employers, they also have the right not to hire you if they don't want to. I've had a lot of students in the past tell me, oh, Martinez, I went for a second interview and I didn't get chosen. Why? I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't there. I don't know. Oh, that's stupid. I went for a second interview. I should have got the job. So just because you got a second interview means you the guaranteed you should have got the job, you know, either way. Regardless how the interview went, that doesn't make sense. But again, the employers they got the right to choose who they want to work for them. Okay, the last one is the use of money. You get to choose how you spend your money. If you want to buy a new phone, sure. If you want to buy new shoes, awesome. Uh, no one's going to be over your shoulder telling you, hey, save that $500, don't spend it, keep it, keep it. Don't spend it. No one's going to do that. It's up to you to decide. But this does play a factor later on next semester when we talk about money management. You know, because some people just fear, oh, I have 100 bucks in my pocket. I got to spend it. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to spend your money on anything you don't want to. Just because it's sitting in your pocket, let it sit there. Just because it's in your bank account, let it be in your bank account. Okay, 
you do not have to spend that money just because you got it. Okay. The next one, economic efficiency. Basically using our resources wisely. Because again, we don't have an unlimited amount of stuff. We're all we're limited in everything. Fresh water, food, lumber, steel, metals, you know, medicine, everything we are limited on. So that's why it's it's important that we don't waste what we have. You know, great example, you know, when it says like more waste equals less goods, it's like if in class, we just got pencils and some students just break it, toss it in the trash can, you know, things like that. Why? You know, break off the eraser and things like that. Why? Somebody else could have used that pencil. They could have used that pencil for another class. So when they go to another class and they're like, oh, we're out of pencils. Oh, how come you guys don't have no pencils? Well, because people like you are the ones who break it. So stop breaking it. You're wasting that pencil. How, think of how many papers you could have wrote with that one pencil. How much work could have got done with that one pencil. But just because, hey, I want to break it. <laughs> you're wasting it. Okay. So that's the thing. That's what it means. When you waste, there's less. Okay. The next one, economic security. Protection from layoffs and illnesses. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you this too. I said in my other classes, I'm going to tell you guys too here in this lecture video. I had a student some years ago tell me, Mr. Martinez, how come I can't get uh, unemployment benefits? I'm like, I don't know. Have you applied? Yeah, I applied. They tell me I can't get it. Where did you work before? Well, I've never worked before. How can you expect to get unemployment benefits if you've never worked before? Okay. I know it sounds like common sense, but apparently I do have to mention this because this was a legitimate thing a student asked me. If you put into the system, you can get from the system. If you don't put into the system, you don't get anything from the system. And what I mean by that is like paying your taxes. So for people, because I have, I've had a lot of students back when I was here in Tulare, even to where I'm at, at with you guys at Carter G. I've had a lot of students tell me I get paid under the table. You know, oh, I'm making a lot of money because I'm getting paid under the table. Okay, but here's the thing, though. If you lose your job and you're like, well, I had a job, you know, working in construction, or I had a job working at a car dealership place, you know, auto, you know, repair place. You can't get unemployment because you did not pay your taxes on that and you can get a lot of trouble. Okay. Again, like I say, if you try to buy a car, $54,000 car and you pay cash, that's a huge red flag. How do you get that money? How do you get that money when you don't have a job? Big red flag. Huge red flag. Okay. So, yeah, as a side hustle, sure, it's, it's an okay thing, right? But as a job, 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 getting paid under the table is not good, guys. I'm telling you. Okay. Next thing, insurance plans. Right now, you're young. You're like, why do I care about insurance? What, what, when do I need this? Some of you guys will need it sooner than others, especially if you have kids. You know, you are going to try to find the jobs that offer insurance plans because they cover injuries and illnesses, especially with little kids. Kids get sick all the time. You know, so it's imperative that you have insurance. Okay. The next thing, Social Security. It's a federal program. Originally, it was created to help people who were disabled or really old and couldn't work anymore. And what I mean by disabled, it's like they got hurt on the job. They're ment uh, mentally or physically disabled where they can't work anymore. You know, so that's what Social Security was for. Same thing with the retirement. 
people got too old where it's like, hey, you're 80 some years old, you know, you can't lift these 60 pound bags, you know, anymore, like of like concrete, can't do it anymore. You know, 90% of Americans get Social Security. Okay. And the last thing is Medicare, basically health coverage for people 65 or older. So if you have someone in your family who's 65 or older, you know, and they haven't signed up for Medicare, make sure that they get that done because it will help them with doctor visits and, um, you know, medication and things like that. Now, some of you guys who have jobs, you will probably already know this, but full employment is amazing. When you work full time, that means you have more security to provide for yourself, for your family, who else, whoever else is depending on you. Okay. Now, when you have no job, e, this does not look good for you because it's harder for you to provide for your family and you have less goods and services available to you. You know, because again, in a market economy, you have to pay for things. So, yeah. Okay. Now, in our country right now, we are going through what it says right there for the price stability. Inflation. We are in an in inflation times right now. What does that mean? It means it's a rise in general level of prices. Things are getting more and more expensive. Okay. So um, people, you know, workers should say, need more money to pay for the things they need. And you notice I put the word need, not want. Because when inflation gets really bad, it gets to the point where people go, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to spend my money on a new pair of J's. I'm not going to spend my money on this Gucci purse. You know, I need to save my money and spend it on things like bread, milk, eggs, meat, groceries. You know, if you know they have kids and they need shoes, instead of getting them those $200 Jordans, maybe look for the discounted price ones, you know, or maybe shop somewhere else that have discounted shoes, you know, because again, you no longer can afford the wants. You have to focus on the needs. Okay. Now, when, who gets really affected by inflation? People on fixed incomes, people who um, get paid the, the same no matter what. So someone like myself, I am salary. I get paid the same no matter what. So if prices of things go higher and higher, I can't work overtime, you know, to get more money. I get paid the same whether I work more, you know, if I work on my weekends, I still get paid the same. Okay. Somebody who's retired, collecting Social Security, they're still getting the same amount of money. And the thing is, the prices go higher. And sometimes, you know, these older people, they got to decide, you know, am I going to, you know, have to, like, save my money to buy some food? Or am I going to have to, like, going to have to, like, you know, pay the rent? You know, what, what am I going to do with my money? Because they can only have so much. And price of things go higher and higher. And they can't afford it. So when do we know we're out of an inflation? Well, there's not like there's somebody with a sign saying, hey, we're out of inflation. No. Basically, it's when people have enough money that they're able to buy their wants. You know, people now have money so they can buy the newer cars, the better clothing, um, buy a new home, you know, buy electronics, buy a new TV, you know. Do they really need it? No. No, they don't. But, hey, now I have prices come down and, excuse me, now I have more money, I can buy things I actually want. That's how a nation knows. And it's not just a little town or even a state. It has to be the whole country. 
that this is happening to. And that's when they will say, okay, we're out of an inflation time because now people are buying what they want. Now, a volunteer market is when the buyers and sellers freely and willingly engage in some type of transaction, meaning here's my money, I want that. Let's exchange, okay? Um, the thing is, uh, I've said this in every single class, just because you go into a store, it doesn't mean you have to buy something, okay? Now, a student did ask me, well, how come some stores say in order to use the restroom, you have to buy something? That's a store policy. That's something totally different, you know, because they don't have to allow you to use the restroom, okay? That's the store's policy saying yeah, you have to buy something. You have to be a customer in order to um, use the facilities, okay? Uh, but you don't have to feel obligated like, oh, my God, I came into the store. I got to buy something. No, you don't. Not at all. So don't ever feel like you have to. It's not like they're going to close the doors and be like, you came in here and you got to buy something. No, they're not going to do that. Now, how do you know you made a good deal? Basically, you feel better afterwards. You're happy. Like, hey, I gave them my money. I got this item. I'm happy. When both sides feel that, feel that happiness, they're better off than they were before. That's how you know it was a good deal. Okay. The next section is really interesting. It's private property rights. Typically, when we talk about private property, people think about homes. Yes, that is one thing. It is a tangible thing. But uh, private property can mean more than that. Now, let's say you buy a brand new pair of Jordans, right? And you decide, you know, I'm going to spray paint half of it purple. Michael Jordan and his, and his executive people cannot come over and say, hey, hey, you can't spray paint those shoes. That's not the way we designed them. Um, you can do what you want with them because you bought it. Okay. Now, I want to be clear with this because the student was asking me in class. Well, I heard some people sue a company because, some, because of this and this and that about it. Okay. When you take a phone, let's say you have this phone, right? If you decide to take it apart and try to make it better, okay, and it doesn't work anymore, this is your phone. You bought it. You tried to alter it, and it doesn't work anymore. That's your fault. What a lot of people try to do is they try to make it better, and they then say, oh, no, this company that made this phone, they made it bad. And it's honestly not that hard for them to see like, hey, yeah, someone tried to change this. Someone tried to take this out. Someone tried to open this casing. You know, that's not what the company does. You know, they, they know we don't deal with that. That's all computers, electronics that seal all that stuff in. That's not really people touching that stuff. So a robot's not going to try to pry open uh, a hard drive. A person is. Okay. So when you buy something and you try to alter it and try to blame the company, that's what people that's what people um, go to court for about things. You're saying, oh, no, this is defective. And it's not. They tried to change it and then try to blame the company when it doesn't work anymore or it explodes or catches on fire, things like that, okay? Now, private property, again, is not just tangible things, things you can touch. It can also be your skills and talents. So let's say you're a really good mechanic. You know how to take out an engine, take it apart, clean up the pistons, you know, align them and things like that, right? Nobody can put a gun to your head saying, you have to be a mechanic, you're really good at it. You should do that for a job. No, no one can do that. What you do with your skill, it's up to you. If you want to use, do it that as a job, fine. You want to do it as a uh, side hustle, fine. You just want to do it as a hobby, fine. Okay, that's your private property. That skill, that talent, that's yours. 
and nobody can tell you what to do with it. Okay. The last one, profit, profit motive. That's basically anything that is your goal. So let's say you're like, man, I want to get that new 2023 F-150 truck. So you're working, you save money, things like that. That truck is your profit motive. Now, does it always have to be something big like a house or a car, you know, things like that? No, absolutely not. It could be something as, let's say, a soda. Like, man, I could really use a soda, but I don't have any money. Uh, you know, I'll go and cut a couple lawns for the neighbors, you know, get some get some money, and then I'll go to the store. That's your profit motive. That's why you did the work, so you can get a soda. Okay, so it could be anything. It's just whatever your goal is to, to buy, whatever the item is, that's your profit motive. So here is your question. Now, in this question, I, when I talk about private property, I'm talking about actual land. Okay. So when it says, do you believe that private property should be a right or a privilege? I'm talking about land. So should everyone... From kids to homeless people and everywhere in between. Should everyone have the right to own property? Have a little piece of land to themselves. Or should it be a privilege? You know, that, hey, you have to earn the money for it to buy this and things like that. It shouldn't be given out to everyone. Okay? So what do you think? Should everyone have a little piece of land in this country to do what they want with it? Or should it be a privilege? So think about it. Write your response. Okay. Once you're done with this question, you're done with this lesson. Okay. Hopefully you guys learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed it. All right. So you guys, you take care. You be safe. And I'll see you guys later. Okay.